Hi, I'm Melanie. Welcome back to our house to homestead. Join my family and I as we convert our house on the outskirts of Auckland, New Zealand into a homestead where we grow, harvest and cook our own food from scratch. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about honeybees and keeping honeybees at home. Earlier this year, just before we moved onto this property, I started a course learning how to keep honeybees at home. I was really fortunate that the bees got delivered to this property so that they could establish their new home. I'm very much a beginner. I've been doing this for eight months and we're just moving into spring where it starts to get very interesting and busy. Previously, I would check the bees maybe uh, once or twice a month and it was a matter of checking on them to make sure everybody's happy and that they were fed. Something I did was give them some sugar syrup so that they had enough food during winter. My hive is still very small and establishing, so I haven't got any honey out of it yet, but hopefully moving into this season, spring and then into summer, I'm going to be able to show you how to harvest the honey and to make products out of that honey, including candles, and obviously delicious honeycomb. Now that we've moved into spring, things get a little bit busier. In terms of beekeeping, I need to check the hive every week, if not 10 days. And I need to check to make sure that new queen cells aren't forming, and if they are, that I kick them off so that my hive isn't tempted to swarm. Something that I'm going to try and do if I see those queen cells forming is I'm wanting to split my hive into two. So stay tuned in a future episode, I will show you how I split my hive and where I'm gonna place it. The other thing that I need to do in spring is protect my bees from the varroa mite. I find honey and honeybees really fascinating. It's so interesting how a bee can take nectar from a flower and turn it into this product that is pantry stable and it has therapeutic effects for us from coughs to colds to healing burns. Basically, the bees take the nectar from around your property, they head back to their hive, they have stored it away in a special honey stomach. They go back to the hive and they regurgitate the nectar put it into the cells, the honeycomb that you can imagine inside a hive, and while they're putting it in there, they wave their wings and dry some of the water off the nectar solution. So this thickens the honey, and then they cap it with another layer of wax, and this allows the honey to stay preserved inside the hive. When the bees have regurgitated the honey, they have added their own digestive enzymes, and these enzymes are what create the preserving factors and also the antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal properties that honey has. The honey is actually there to feed the growing hive. So it's there to feed the larvae and the colony. They mix it with pollen or they make royal jelly and depending on what the job of the honeybee is determines what food they get. Where I am is in the bush and they are going to have our native manuka bush, which they can use as a nectar source, which has amazing therapeutic benefits. Manuka honey is a product that we produce here in New Zealand and also in Australia from the manuka or tea tree species. This honey has been shown through studies to have therapeutic benefits. It can be really good to treat burn. It's really interesting, but if you put a layer of the manuka honey on a burn, it creates a physical barrier, but it's still moist. And along with creating a physical barrier that doesn't let things get into the burn while it's healing, it also contains those antimicrobial benefits, which prevent infection from forming on the burn. It's really common to use honey for coughs and colds, and that's because of, again, of those antimicrobial properties. Another really cool thing about honey is that it's great for gut health. It contains a really difficult carbohydrate for us to digest, and so therefore it goes straight into our intestines for our bacteria to digest, and this is a prebiotic, which obviously contributes to gut health. So the bees are just over here. I always have a helper when it comes to the honeybees. So here we are just outside their hive. I don't want to get too close because I don't have my actual bee suit on and I'm terrified of bees. But uh, 
As long as I avoid the front of the hive, they don't get too angry. What I really wanted to show you while we were out here was where the beehive is situated. So it's right on the edge of my orchard there, which was my plan to pollinate the plants, but also it's in the middle of this bush. These are the manuka trees that I was mentioning before. Okay, George and I are gonna go and get ready to jump into the beehive. I'm gonna go and pop my bee suit on and then I can show you what is inside. Almost all set for the bees. I'm just lighting some hesse in here. This is going to be used to form smoke, which calms the bees down. As soon as the hessian has lit enough that it's nearly burning my fingers, I pop it in the smoker and start pumping. And there is an air gap at the bottom, which provides oxygen for the hessian flames and gets that fire really going. We have a whole layer of frames that are going to be just for honey and as you'll see right now all of these frames are empty because it's the start of spring but eventually the bees will start to form comb on these frames when they've got heaps of stuff down the bottom in their brood boxes and then they will start to fill these ones with honey too. So I'm just gonna lift this whole frame off. And then what you can see is my queen excluder. So this prevents the queen from going into the honey frames. So we can lift that one off too. So just recently I've added this top box, the second box up. And this is a second brood box. So this is allowing my queen to make a really healthy colony. Again, you'll see that most of these frames are empty. They've got bees thinking about adding comb. You can see here, which is really exciting. But actually, they're mostly empty. They've only been in for about a month. So I won't find my queen here, unlikely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this bottom box, calm all of the bees down and when I pull some of these centre frames out that's my best bet to find the queen. I can't see much when the frames are covered in bees so I just gently shake them off. And now I'm looking really closely to see if there's larvae which you can see with the white shiny grubs inside the cells. Something that's difficult for you to see in this image is the tiny eggs that's been laid in the last one to two days but I did see them so I'm happy now I can move on to the rest of the inspection. I'm interested to see what's in this next box up. I did see some brood in there and I want to see what they've formed. You can definitely see some brood forming, which is exciting, and a lot of capped honey. 
Now I'm going to place my queen excluder on, on top again so that if any honey is formed on the next layer I'll be able to access it in the spring. And on goes my next box with the intention that it will get filled with honey. So I've just picked some fresh grass and all I do is I just twist it off. It's a real balancing act to get the right amount. And without touching too much of the metal smoker, I pop it in. And basically that just starves it of oxygen. And then I won't burn the shed down before I need to use it again. I hope you enjoyed the little tour of my backyard beehive. Follow me and watch more videos to see me split the hive soon in spring and turn it into two hives. Details for any products and equipment used are in the description below. Hit subscribe to follow along with all of the developments on our house to homestead. I'll be posting more videos on growing, harvesting and cooking our food. Don't miss out. See you next week team.